scent marking so scent they marking. spray urine because mm. they have their own scent in it the right above the inner gland mm. is a scent gland so the urine also takes some scent with it this is to tell other tigers that she it's is, almost like fingerprints it's unique mm. to each tiger so yeah. they don't come there then you got others unless they want to invade and they confident on it otherwise they yeah they know it's another tiger is they they but they know ke so another uh, very interesting time to photograph animals is when they feeding mm-hmm. because they have yes. everyone this has a very distinct way of feeding <laughs> like deers leap yeah. because they are not grazers mm. they are browsers right so they eat the top leaves and then they like this one the samba deer is on its hind legs mm-hmm. climbing up to get leaves mm. same way rhinos are most of the time kajranga in and around water upar dekhte nahi hai yaar kabhi khaya khate rehte hain except for the dust time and feeding time they come out in the open right and then monkeys feed a lot but then how you compose so i got this abstract of the coral tree and the finger dikh raha hai ha it's just the right hand is grabbed that's it like abstract nice it's grabbing the flower right yeah before it feed so i okay. got an abstract only of that okay mm. <clears throat> so that was the hobby of feeding time now mm. let's talk about the carnivore feeding time that you all another time when they showcase the maximum personality mm. towards other animals towards us they are very defensive about guarding their mm. kid on the contrary this one was a scavenger so he just wanted to grab a massive leg of a samba and run before another carnivore comes there and grabs it from it the tiger on the contrary is actually guarding it mm. and snarling okay sack mm. this will happen only in the breeding season and only the males have vocal sacs this is also the sexual dimorphism mm. what is sexual dimorphism sexual dimorphism is the physical difference in appearance between two genders a lot if you go see africa pictures of a lot mm. of unusual pictures of young mm. are shot during the breed, uh, when they mm. have young right unfortunately in india mm. we don't know because right. her, mm. her bios have the young in monsoon and parks are shut there kanyo mm-hmm. the two lives no one's ever seen them actually giving birth mm. ever mm. unless they're in captivity mm. i was lucky enough to see a hatching of a gecko happen the same mukurti tiger is a mm. new uti and i was lucky enough to get this because i turned a rock to see if there are snakes and geckos and frogs under it and i f- found this young gecko hatching out of there so oh. did you use a macro lens for no <coughs> kit lens kit lens no this is the point and shoot camera that time i didn't even have a dslr how do you spell mukurthi m u k h u r t h i mukurthi so yes you put the rock back or again breeding like time of the year when you have young this is a chinkara with the young wow uh, neel guys hmm. uh, like blue yeah, bullion mm. again composition mm. full picture would have been too boring yeah. mm. so cropped it now cropping it's a different lecture by itself mm. not right <coughs> now no, not on this trip cropping has to be done limb to limb so that it doesn't look incomplete mm. and it looks very off Correct. so shoulder shoulder Little ankle behind, ankle yeah. Yes. so it becomes a frame and the young in between <coughs> again the samba deer with fawn and dobby yard langur oh it's so interesting oh bit on the yeah. there are some I'll other uh, pictures of uh, young ones with adults uh, tigers a standard picture with young nothing great about it <laughs> which one is the mother here in these four picture the one that is sitting at the back none of them no oh. all four cubs <laughs> but they are bigger than the mother all of them at oh. 11 months wow because they are males no jin father jay wow. jay so even jay ka kya hua fine hai disappeared poached disappeared nobody knows nobody knows and this is one of the most unusual pictures you will see from india uh, it is the smallest wild cat in the world called the rusty spurt cat ah okay with, ah, with her yeah. so the size of the adult is this big Oh. and so imagine the kitten with it wow oh. oh wow and the only picture ever clicked with the mother and the young wow what is wow. the name of the cat rusty, rusty spotted, spotted cat rusty spotted, spotted cat okay. so when bbc did a series called cats recently hmm. the episode on this show to show you the size of how small it is it actually female. comes out from underneath the leaf that is how small the oh, adult wow. is is it so yeah. imagine the kitten would be that tiny wow so this is the only picture when it came out hmm of the mother and the yes yeah uh, which which forest is it kurtoba 
एवरीबडी वॉज टू बिजी लुकिंग फॉर द टाइगर वाइल यू लुकिंग पीपल आर पासिंग बाय नो वन यू स्टॉप कहने हाँ ठीक है बिल्ली होगी बिल्ली है टाइगर तो बहुत देखे ये ये है ये Let's talk about interactions. So, animal interactions are of two kinds: the ones that happen between species and the ones that happen within <laughs> species. Yeah. And they always add so much value. Like herbivores will always have some birds around them that clean them up, and the the herbivores don't mind it. It's pest control and they're mm. the grooming, right? But not always. Like the bara singer this time didn't like <coughs> the rufous tree by hitching a ride on, mm. on its head. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So you suddenly you have so much personality to that animal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Look at the face, it's so. Hot, sir. Yeah. 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 So it's this fish, <laughs> right? Another very set of very interesting in uh, interaction between, between species. species. Now again, what happens <coughs> is the the place or the name of the or the marketing of the place usually overpowers the visit. Mm. Like tiger reserves. Mm. Everybody in Bandar Tiger Reserve wants to see a tiger. Mm. Whereas this turned out to be one of the most unusual pictures ever clicked in India. Mm. It's a snake, snake and a deer. Right? Snake. Wow. No, it's a rat snake coming yeah. out and looking straight at the spotted deer. Both of them, they were looking at each other. Lovely. Tiger, to both dekhenge, lekin ye dekhenge. Ye nahi dekhenge. Correct. The interaction both of them. Even the ears are concentrating on the snake, mm. which was hissing. Mm. And the snake is also coming out of the grass. It's not a cobra, <laughs> but the fact that it's not a cobra is still taking an effort to come out mm. of the grass and stare right into the snake, mm. uh, into the uh, spotted deer. Mm. Now see the interaction that happening. Yeah. Mm. Second is this. These were this is was shot in Panna when Panna barely had any tourists or no tourists. Can I see? Okay. 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 Now you see that what happened was two subadult tigresses, which recently split from the mother, somehow managed to uh, kill her. Nee, nee, guy, blue bull. Mm. But because they were young, they missed out on a lot of details that they, uh, they do uh, an adult tiger would do after killing a, a, a animal, which is mm. eat a bit, drag mm. it, cover it, so that scavengers don't come. Correct. They didn't do it. They ate. Uh, they ki- killed the nee guy next to river, ate it, slept. Next morning, the crocodile came there, dragged it. The crocodile, this crocodile was twice the size of the tigress. Oh. So when it dragged it, and it was so bold that it started eating their kill in front of them. The bolder sister came and started snarling at it, and the crocodile got into it. Eventually, she got so frustrated, she got in, into water and sat next to the crocodile, and the crocodile still continued to eat, and she couldn't do anything. Wow. wow. Third picture is this. When was this? You said something. third picture is this which again from banna published in the united nations calendar in 2022 mm. it's a it's a single shot it was a hit and hit and miss luckily it was a hit because again i knew what was going to happen this is clicked all the settings were in place a single focus point mm. Mm. not able to see clearly is it a wolf and a it's a jackal yeah, charging jackal. at the mm. himalayan griffins mm. but it is a single point focus you know you see it on big thing mm. the mm. vultures are blurred mm. out because front bokeh mm. with a single point mm. that through their necks i can see the jackals with all its canines out charging at them mm. but for this frame to happen you <coughs> needed to know that the jackal would charge yeah. when and how and what should be the camera settings <coughs> to execute because it's one shot or no shot and why was it charging because there's they are yeah. feeding on a sabar scavengers what scavengers oh. so when the vultures leave then can the jackal feed on it The tigers are known to kill crocodiles, right? In Cobbett, if they are adults. Okay. Uh, this thing also. But they, they can puncture through their uh, uh, skin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some parts. Uh, b- b- belly. Belly is also. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to take you through another one. Yeah, okay. Did you see this one? I think it's good. आर्ट <laughs> 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 portraits behavior it's an art Correct. like for example i'm putting 1 2 3 4 things mm. classify them for me 
they segregate them into electronics acha electronic ki ek family ho gaya ha both these two are stationary ek ho gaya and plastic right bravo now this can be clubbed together as learning. source of learning material yes. right both of them are correct methods yes. correct. correct so same happens with photography people get into unnecessary arguments saying Classic. these are the, the classification of wildlife photography ki macro photography bird photography mammal photography mm. but then that can also be classified as portraits correct mm. uh, motion shots hai yeah, na habitat shots and all of them are okay all of them correct mm. right so there is no right or wrong way of classification of the genres of photography right so these are few very unusual uh, uh, i have classified them in a, a very unusual way and let's go through them one because the, this classification is not on the basis of the gear this is on the basis of what i see in animals right first are portraits Second are action shots. Mm. In action shots, there are two subcategories. Top action, which we talk about, mm. fast shutter, so everything freezes, mm. and uh, blurred action, which is panning basically, slow shutter. Okay, I have a question. We'll here. talk about each slide. Okay. Yeah, I'm going into that. I'll also show you examples. Okay. Next is interaction, and the last one is anthropomorphic. Okay. I will go into each slide now. Okay. Mm. Let's talk about portraits. When <coughs> are portraits? clicked mm. primarily when animals are not in motion correct mm. is when you will get your best portraits mm. because imagine your bird shots from yesterday yeah. either the head was in focus and the body was blur the body was in focus the toe was blur uh, the, right but if it was not moving mm. is when you got your best portrait mm. everything would be in focus nothing was moving the shutter speed was okay everything was fine right so your best portraits happen when animals are not moving mm. Also, the best portraits are considered when they're looking into the camera. Mm. Mm. Wow! That's Because then there's a sense of communication that happens. The passport the... photo, I see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. then there's a sense of communication between the camera and the animal. Does this skill set depends whether it's a passport well? or yes. Aadhaar card? Yes. Oh. If a bird is looking into the camera, yeah. 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 But it also depends on the, on the conversation. Yeah. Like the face first. Yeah. I mean the structure as well, right? It's not. Okay. Right. We saw as a photo of a smiling. But egg. smaller birds. Smiling. Gecko. The portraits that are clicked in two ways. One, mm. which are extremely tight, like yeah. you said, to get the expression, it has to be only this much. Mm. Mm. And if you're getting the full body, usually the best way to do it is the rule of thirds. Mm. Correct. So, do you guys know the rule of thirds? Mm. Yes. Everyone does. Nine. Yeah. Grid. Yeah. Grid. Yeah. Nine. Nine. Yeah. Box. Line. पे आना चाहिए. बीच का स्क्वायर का कोई भी एक कोनर पे होना चाहिए. But that. is where also people go wrong yeah. which understanding ki wo square ke kaun se kone mein rakhna hai crop karte yes. time so right. negative space has to be in the direction of where the bird is seen. yeah direction or if it is an arboreal species then it has to be the left top corner hmm. niche space dena hai correct hai na correct to upar space kyu de raha hai if it is looking down hmm. all those things like for example here tiger is in the valley hmm. so it is on the bottom corner of the my hmm. center square correct hmm. ki aisa hai diagonal aisa hai mera direction the tiger is looking here This bird is looking here, so it is the bottom right corner. Correct, mm-hmm. correct. Because here, mm-hmm. there is more space there. Because it is looking there. With the leopard, it is the exact opposite. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now let's talk about action shots. Mm-hmm. Now in mm-hmm. action shots, there are two kinds. One, they are freezing the entire frame. Background view is sharp. Animal is also sharp. How is this done? By having an extremely fast shutter speed. Like a camera. So, what is shutter speed? Is the shutter opening and closing? Mm-hmm. And whatever happens is captured on your sensor, which is the the brain or the heart of the camera. So here you see everything frozen. The leopard jumped onto the tree. The tree is in focus. The leopard is in focus. Everything is nothing is moving in it. Mm-hmm. Although it is a motion, but I froze in that motion. Mm-hmm. Right? Same. Red jungle fowl running across. It mm-hmm. is frozen. There is no motion, as if it's stuck there. Mm-hmm. See the the raptor. This is the short toed sneaky gull in flight. Mm-hmm. It's frozen. On the contrary, again two examples yeah. where this is achieved by having a very fast shutter speed. Two human griffins fighting in air, frozen. There's no motion. Mm-hmm. Same with the chinkar. 
राइट एंगल चेंज कर गया इसका लैपटॉप का विल इट दैट हेल्प इफ यू चेंज द लैपटॉप वी आर गो now this is also uh, you can use top action to show animal behavior hmm. not necessarily portraits hmm. like for example a grey heron before landing always will skim over water but never touch it you see how low it is it feels that the primary wings are actually touching the water they are not hmm. second a leopard juvenile is so irritated because it's that hungry hmm. that he actually chasing a squirrel up there hmm. But I frozen it with a fast shutter speed that the tree, leopard, and the squirrel, everything is in focus. Mm. Mm. Same thing. A mother has come back after a hunt and extremely irritated, like a lot mm. of mothers who come back from a hectic day, mm. and she does not want to cuddle. She, mm. she actually is snarling at her own cub. Yeah. <clears throat> right. And then is the other shot. This mm. is done on purpose, uh, which is showing motion. So if you see this picture. The background is blurred, and mm. the animal is in focus because I'm moving the camera with the animal and then clicking, so that the animal stays in focus. But there's a motion because my camera is also moving. The shutter speed is slow. Slow, slow, medium, but not no. too slow. Not too. But slow. when you move the water. when you're moving the camera, you have to keep focusing, focusing. How can you? No, if you click, how click on the animal and track the animal, sure. then it will be on the animal because it's in the same plane. Mm. Mm. Like the uh, like the raptor, uh, like the kestrel and the harrier that we saw flying yesterday. I was moving my camera with them every so was he yeah. so was he right yeah. same is here the entire background is blurred but the animal is is in focus this is done on purpose this so what would be the aperture when you are having this uh, shutter speed yeah. slow so aperture really doesn't matter doesn't because matter. it has nothing to do with depth of field right. it is to do with shutter speed completely okay. Now the science behind this a good panning. Mm-hmm. The difference between a blurred shot and a panned shot is the animal has to be in focus. Yeah. Okay. Because a lot of time people justify mm-hmm. their blurred shot as a panned shot, which mm-hmm. it is not. <laughs> like here, this also panning. The grass is blurred out, but the face is still in focus. Mm-hmm. The leopard is moving. The arms are, the legs are moving, but the face is still in focus. Mm-hmm. Correct. Same is the question. The yeah, the geese is flying, mm-hmm. the wings are fluttering, but mm-hmm. the body and the head is still in focus. Mm-hmm. On the contrary, if it was woodpecker, the body would be in focus, and mm-hmm. the head would be blurred. If you want to show how mm-hmm. they peck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Correct. Correct. So you are doing panning in aperture mode. No shutter speed. In shutter speed. Shutter speed. So so you are controlling the shutter speed. Doing that. <laughs> in woodpecker, you know, you cannot, you know, you will not be panning with. Uh, no, you'll just be at one place, and, one and the animal will move. And give you that panning. Oh. Like I was shot uh, while we were doing the course in Cobbett mm. last year that mm. he did. There was a shot of Indian scops all where I put the camera on a table, mm. and the head is uh, the body is in focus. The head is turning because it is shaking its head after rain. Wow. Okay. So the beak is in focus, the body is in focus, and the head is blurred because it's mm. shaking its head. Like so that. you decide this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Although the first guy who got it did not decide it. <laughs> it was an accident. Yeah, again few more examples. Elephant. They wanted to show the elephant is running. Ah. So the feet are blurred because mm. it's running, but the mm. animal is in focus. Mm. Same thing with the lion, mm. and same thing with the tiger. Mm. Other few examples. See the shutter speed one by fifty. So it's not yeah. too slow to not focus at all. One by fifty, one by sixty, one by thirty. Mm. You will get you that oh. result. See, now different kinds of panning within birds. But the shake must be handled, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the panning when you are panning the. Yeah, mm. and then you can play around and manage that shake mm-hmm. because you're moving. Usually, you have a shake if you 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 are not moving. Mm. But here you are purposely moving with the animal, oh, right. so there's less shake. Okay. Like in this, if you're moving, the background is blurred because he is showing the motion of how fly uh, fast that bird of play, prey is flying. Mm, 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 mm. Here he is showing that how many birds are there. So mm. he is showing the fluttering of the wings, but the heads are in focus of the gulls. Mm. Right. Now come, let's come to the third category of uh, wildlife photograph, which are interactions. Now, like I said, interaction can be within species and and between species. Here, there are two species interacting. The steppe eagle is getting mobbed or troubled by the Brahmini cat. Hmm. It wants to perch on the same hmm. rock. There is an animal interaction between four mega scavengers of Panna hmm. in one frame. 
you have the indian uh, re, uh, red headed vulture which is the king vulture you have the jackal you have the cinereus vulture and the himalayan vulture wow, wow. then you have the samba uh, samba being fed upon by oh uh, himalayan griffin it's done its job <laughs> Okay. Now this is the second slide, which is the animal same interaction. Same. Magiya puri. Ah, sorry, sorry. So that was spe- interaction between uh, species. This is interaction within species. Like the Himalayan griffin getting into a tussle at a scavenging site. They're literally fighting midair. Two scorpions interacting. The cubs interacting with the mother. Now comes to the uh, let's come to the la- last part, which is anthropomorphic. What is anthropomorphic? When animals in your artwork show human-like behavior, mm. it's called an anthropomorphic photograph. Mm. Derived from anthropology. Sorry. Derived from anthropology. Yes. Like you see this community behavior, like how people in olden times used to come back from fields and hang out at one meeting site every mm. evening. because that time there was no sense source of entertainment so you got the entire community work here the community human like community feel here mm. again two very different sentiments yeah. mm. seen in human seen in again mother feeling the mm. yeah no okay. now after this we we'll, let's get into actual pictures as a tool to tell stories i am going to first tease you guys through some very different random unrelated pictures mm-hmm. each picture mm-hmm. sometimes you need a picture series to convey a story sometimes mm-hmm. one picture can be a story so i am going to show you individual stories first mm-hmm. and then i am going to show you a series a very se- uh, yeah series of very strong stories you saw the tiger uh, snarl at the crocodile yeah. this is the last part of that story which she actually got frustrated yeah. and sat in front of the crocodile and the crocodile still finished the entire thing so you see the size difference her entire body is the size of the head <laughs> oh my yeah, god huge. huge one huh? big guy it should be more like 12 feet types yeah more more definitely how come the crocodile did not attack the tiger wait was eating the uh, full <laughs> global <laughs> already <laughs> that was dead yeah, why spend energy then yeah. if it's yeah. what do you see in this picture forest uh, forest fire Yeah, mm. right. The forest fire yeah. with a barn owl uh, stuck in that forest fire on oh, the electricity pole. Oh, oh shit! Oh god, painful. Mm. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah. So one picture can make. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah. difference. Did this were anything? No, this but this has been published uh, as an article. What do you see in this picture? Is there anything unusual about this? Mm. People and people, place of worship. Mm-hmm. This is Panna again. Is there a tiger somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> this, this is coexisting. Yeah, there, there. Oh, is it? Oh, uh, old hunting palace. Hmm. Ah. Oh, the, in hunting the in the core palace. area. Yes. A tiger, tiger there, and yes. the foot patrolling guys. Wow. wow. So that Showing. that that was a hunting palace. Yeah, in the early days, the Panna Maharaja and those guys. Hmm. So this shows you how closely they all live, how they coexist, how the guards are working. the tiger knows the guard doesn't know the tiger is there but the tiger knows the guard is there that's mm. why he's actually moving away from the guard it's mm. not going towards it mm. answering a question ki attack karta hai ki nahi karta tiger yahan nikal raha hai ulta direction ja raha hai isko nahi pata ye yahan pani bharne aaya hai but he is aware that there could be tiger yeah guard. for sure they will be definitely yeah. cautious about yeah. it gheer mein to the forest guard okay, so to please ignore the coloration because i think this screen is not calibrated ah, okay. that's why yeah okay. that's why the highlights and over saturation so this is about uh, change in habitat mm. Mm. wolves around maharashtra have started using crops to hide instead of forest because the grasslands are getting converted into farmlands for oh, sugar cane wow. primary this is near pune mm. this is the same wolf near baramati wow. on the contrary the wolves in north karnataka have started using rocky outcrops for their habitat instead of grasslands Where they actually use granite oh rocks to hide God. because their color matches with them. Mm. Mm. They started living on the granite boulders. Mm. The, But what is the natural habitat? Grasslands. Grasslands. <coughs> no, but it's. No, in the earlier days it was forests. 
grasslands always grasslands uh-huh. but they started living in took the sugarcane fields like the leopards of jhunna uh-huh. this uh, conservation effort one a, a school teacher from uttar rani khet national award these are stepping eagles that come to india every winter and if you haven't seen them most of the times the best places to spot them are garbage dumping yards dumping yards and the ones in rani khet had so much tourist waste in it most of them were toxic that more than 30 step eagles died and that's when a school teacher said i need to do something about it he worked for a couple of years with the government and now garbage segregation has ha- started and uh, e waste chemical waste medical waste uh, that's never dumped it that's sent to nenital and only the domestic waste comes here mm-hmm. where the step eagles are coming is and that's that why the reason no. where wet and dry waste separation started happening no no that the processing making into processing easier okay and these come from where so the stepi grasslands okay that's what the name stepi okay right so now the numbers have gone up again but unfortunately they are still in the garbage mm mm-hmm. and i happened to meet this person because i was driving to ranikhet for a paragliding workshop and i stopped the, uh, to see, suddenly i saw a few of these on the conifers and i stopped the car and i started taking pictures and then another guy mm-hmm. with a sony uh, g master lens walked up to me saying kya kar rahe ho so i said like yes yes and what are you doing here? and like i am the guy i count them every day before and after school and then i did this and then this garbage area is also closed for tourists to go in or anyone to go in but he, because he was with me he actually took me to inside and showed me that this garbage also old garbage this is not new garbage mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but he showed me the entire process and how conservation happened and how the numbers have started increasing now nice gecko mm-hmm. so uh, this picture will definitely be published in some of the other magazine this year because it was clicked last march uh, this lizard is called the spiny tail lizard okay. these are found uh in flatlands mm-hmm. they live in burrows these mm-hmm. are herbivores mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but why is this picture getting published because due to some reason which is climate change or interference or la- uh, land acquisition where they are losing habitats we, this is the first ever picture of this species moving habitat they've given up on the grasslands mm-hmm. and they start living on sand dunes mm-hmm. why is it because loss of habitat loss of habitat resorts coming up mining happening they have no burrows and flatlands to live so they move to the neighboring sand dunes although the biggest question rise their herbivores what will they feed yeah. and second they live in burrows so they can't de- yeah. burrows yeah. can't exist here but it happened yeah, la- for the first time last so year is it change in habitat or is it them trying to find new habitat because of change in habitat no why will they otherwise go to yeah. another habitat if you are comfortable in your house yeah. unless there is a reason why would you move to another house unless they feel threatened they will not go yeah So, and because we don't know the reason because this was discovered last year mm. Mm. after this picture came out then scientists have started studying now trying to figure out why is it happening mm. so a lot of times your picture mm. can be evidence for science yes. mm. and can trigger research mm. Mm. maybe they start eating insects no, no. too early no. too early to say too early. okay a very strong image it shows the change in the habitat and what the animals go through mm. a flock of flamingo flamingo in the pristine run of catch but now their habitat has factories behind them yeah with emissions in the same water that they feed on when on field be on field and keep your gear close you never know what will come across this is the only time i saw this snake ever in my life and wa- and was lucky enough to not even search for it, it was handed to me bandit creek no this is a bridal snake one of the rarest snakes in the country uh, i was in hampi with my family and again everyone is chit chatting so i like i'm going to make my micro plans so i found a naturalist there went for a boarding with him he like come over come by 4 and we'll do boarding in the morning i went there 
took me to the forest guest house behind which we were supposed to go for burning and the cook comes saying a snake fell from the roof last night and he gave it to the naturalist because the naturalist also the government rescuer there mm. and to my surprise it turned out to be a bridal snake the snake i put away every snake uh, in maharashtra this was the only one left and man it was just got handed over to me like wow. this why is it called bridal Right. It was whoever described it described it. Yeah, just handed it to me. And luckily, one good thing, I would have not seen the snake if I would have been in the lounge with or the mm. restaurant. At we were staying at the Hyatt Hampi with mm. my family. So imagine if I wouldn't have gone on field, I wouldn't have seen. It. If I didn't have my camera, I wouldn't have documented it. Mm. Oh, one of the rarest wildlife photographs you will find in the world. This is from Ladakh. Wow. Ladakh. What is this? It's a mountain weasel with a newborn in its mouth. Newborn. Never even seen this. So what happened here was we were driving to Sumur, which is again mm. in Ladakh, but a very not less visited. Besides us, there are no tourists to go to that village. Mm. The reason why I like this village is because it has sand dunes on one side, it has a swamp uh, in between, and the other side has cliffs. Mm. So it has mountain species, it has the swamp species and the desert species. Mm. While we were driving here, we suddenly saw an interesting animal run across the road. So we stopped. And ten minutes later, the animal again came back to the road, peeped, and we were like, "Oh, this is interesting." Mm. So we parked the car and we just waited with our cameras and got some shots. Mm. It peeping through rocks, looking at us, but the shots were not so good because they were too far. Mm. So there's a way in which you can approach the animal. We were far. We waited there for 15 minutes. Let it get used to it. Then we a drove closer. a little further. Mm. But every time we did this, we realized it used to run from a field on the right across into the swamp, come back with something in its mouth, and we thought it was hunting. Mm. Because weasels are ferocious; like they are known to go after pikas and other animals. But then it didn't make logic. By the time it came back for the fifth round and again with something in its mouth, I like why would it kill five pikas unnecessarily? Mm. We realized this is something else, and it was two hours by then. Two hours of watching this animal come, go, come, go after every 15-20 minutes gap. In that, we already understood the track of the animal. Mm. It crosses this area, like visibility-wise. Mm. Yeah. Point one, we see it on the right hand side of the river the, uh, of the road. Then it runs across the road. So that's point B. Then it disappears, and right next to the car is the last time when I see it before it disappears, and then comes back the same route. So I got down the car, sat. On the floor, in the in the sand dune, so that she can't see me, and I got the first crossing, and this is the picture and the only picture I got of her crossing, and only after this picture was put onto big screen we realized it was a newborn in the mouth. Mm. So what had happened was it had poured the last night, mm. so maybe her den god was getting flooded, so she was moving all the young to a fresh den. So all of the. Uh, The round, 11 rounds for offspring. Oh, wow. oh wow. But and interesting even after that is when we thought this was the last round and she disappeared for half an hour more. We just sitting there and something very unusual happened. From the new den, hmm. her previous litter came out oh. to hunt with her which are sub adults. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Again, wow. only two of us were photographing this. One of them got a Did not get this, but get, got a close-up on an 1855 lens. A tourist client of ours. Hmm. Although there were eight clients, we had two cars. Only two of us got it. What was the video? Hmm. Again, another example of being out. People say it is pouring. Let's not go out. Hmm. It was pouring at cars, and this is the first ever photograph Sorry. and first ever scientific report. Of any Indian lizard walking on water, walking, yeah. walking or floating, it is walking, it walking. Is walking. It actually, wow. This was published as a double fold picture in the center fold of Sanctuary Asia. Right. We were first ever photographer of gecko walking on water. This is called the dwarf gecko, also called the day gecko because they have round pupils. Mm -hmm. And what had happened was light enough to walk, light enough to walk, and because the forest stream because of excessive rain. The streams were active, and she had to cross from one into another. She actually, figured out, but she was walking across. She was walking diagonally with the flow, mm. which wow. most animals do. Even if you see wildebeest crossing, it's not straight. It's mm. they go with the flow. You can't fight the current, mm. so you're using the current and also walking on the water. 
So if you see the feet are not even in the water, they are on the water. On the water. That's how light it is. First ever photograph from India. Hmm. How did you uh, take that photo? Like you you were on a boat or no a, a stream, were, forest stream, Chota You were just standing looking at the stream. Yeah, like I said, it was pouring and me and my field assistant said we are not going to be the ones who are going to sit in the room. We'll still go out. Even if there are leeches, we'll put on leech socks, we'll go out. We photograph whatever comes across. Mm-hmm. And when this was happening, I was actually photographing a stream. <laughs> and then we realized there's something walking on the stream. And then we got this. Yeah. So this has to move fast. What if she stops? She will drown. Then no, she'll float with the water. Ah. How will you manage your equipment? Then the rain gear, poncho. So in monsoons, I wear a poncho. Mm-hmm. So you can put the camera mm-hmm. out and put it back in your poncho, full poncho. No, but when your camera is out, this is getting wet, no? Hmm. Yeah, that no, is just the front. Uh, yeah. So there are multiple ways. If I'm with clients, then obviously there's not help. Here, I was with my field assistant. So one, the camera was safe when I was walking in the field because it was in my poncho. When I was photographing, he held an umbrella on top. That's why there are no ripples or the water droplets here as well. So you are right on on it. That's why you can see the flash and light around it as well. It was like this, he's holding the yeah. camera. But then also I have side shots just to prove because I know there are cynics who would say ki nahi hoga. So I, then I light down, mm. although there are too many leeches, I light down and then I got a shot where the the nails are even on the water, mm-hmm. nothing is in water. Wow. Yeah. Wow, fantastic. Wow. This which I showed you earlier in the interaction mm-hmm. part, first when it happened, we thought there are two scorpions fighting but what's actually happen- ha- happening is this is the love ritual this is the love dance where the male is grabbing the female's pincers and convincing her, her to mate with him and they move like that it's like ballet bo- bo- mm-hmm. like ballroom mm-hmm. dance where they are like trotting across the sand during the Sounds entire time like yeah <laughs> clicked around pune uh, it shows you uh, the double whammy that the chingara is going through. One, getting drenched in the rain and second, having the snare around the neck. Yeah. Oh. Snare? Mm-hmm. Fanda. Which was set up as a trap for birds actually. Mm. Because That's the reason it is alive. Because it is rope. It is not wire. Yeah. If it were wire, it would have been died. Dead yeah, by now. Correct. So sometimes this is an example of how uh, wrong animals get r- yeah. stuck in some wrong traps. This was a trap laid for fowls primarily, mm-hmm. but then the chingar got stuck in it. Yeah. So what do you do if you see this? We reported and made sure the government went, uh, the forest department went, uh, catch it and release mm-hmm. those snare around it. Have to dart and yeah. Whoa. Again. Oh, this one this is my favorite. Yeah, but in this again, this later got published as a observation, mm-hmm. but. The observation happened while being on a field and while photographing, which mm. this proves how smart is the male. Mm. This is called the fan throated lizard. Mm. Every year, two weeks of summer, they display this fan. Mm. Uh, earlier, it was thought it was only to impress the girls, but then two of my juniors uh, did work on this and they realized they have two fans one on the throat, one on the neck. When they see the female, they only flaunt this fan, mm. which is colorful, but when there's a new male, they flaunt this and the one on the neck also. As a Christian. Mm. Yeah. But this, I was with them because I just wanted to photograph and see this. But while photographing, I realized and showed it to them saying, do you just realize what happened? This male was so was display, trying to impress a girl. Mm. But the wind was so fast that the fan couldn't hold. <laughs> okay. so, and the female was on the other side. Oh. So he is actually supporting his fan from the other side. Oh. Oh. That's fantastic. So that she still gets to see it. Wow. He's supporting his fan because oh, the female is on wow. the other side. Seriously. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yes, we've already seen the rat snake and the deer. Here, what happened? They just nothing. Saved? Yeah, mm. they bumped into each other. That's why that interaction happened. This also I've shown you. The yeah, focus yeah. is here. <coughs> yeah. Now this is an example again of. Uh, Human settlements and steppe eagle, oh, how they co- coexist in urban landscape nowadays. This story I've told you, yeah, yeah, yeah. with the young leopardess chasing a squirrel, that's how th- hungry she was. This yeah. I've showed you. Now this is again a very uh, interesting story of uh, conflict. This is a mahot 
taking care of his elephant who got shot while they were trying to get rid of uh, trespassers and sand sand mafias in the forest so every morning he has to clean that wound mm. because the veterinary doctor can't come every day he's done the treatment but cleaning of the wound has to be done every day but it didn't die no it didn't you got on the leg oh, cool. so he has to clean the wound every day put up new dressing mm. and the elephant knows what he is doing that's mm-hmm. why mm-hmm. so she doesn't let anyone else touch her but he but it is painful it's Correct. a bu- massive bullet in her that's what is happening they removed the bullet yeah mm-hmm. but there is still the past and bleeding mm-hmm. and things were there that's what he's cleaning this is sanjay duri tiger as well etiquette <laughs> oh. a female to- a, t- a tigress using female toilet <laughs> female <laughs> toilet see mahila prasadan and yeah. she marking <laughs> she sent marking on it <laughs> okay now let's talk about photo stories like a yeah. series yeah. right okay. so recently i've started uh, getting into camera trapping but not mm-hmm. the the te- the box the dsl camera trapping what nahi hai so this is a experiment to see what happens outside your room in a safari mm-hmm. lodge mm-hmm. yeah when you when everyone sleeping so i used to put out trap two traps mm-hmm. one at the entrance of the resort gate and mm-hmm. one outside my room mm-hmm. every night mm-hmm. every morning i woke up for safari i used to take off the cameras go for a safari come back mm-hmm. and do this for five consecutive days mm-hmm. and this is me testing kill mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you need a light source you need a dslr so mm-hmm. this is me checking the composition me checking the composition outside my room and the local again with my staff mm-hmm. helping and we had some fantastic fun results mm-hmm. wow. first time want to come indian jackal wow oh wow tiger it's a skull no no it's a, uh, no, it's a neil guy no acha oh, oh, okay. oh with a kill it was dragging wow. it or what no it was uh, actually dead and he just huh. came oh. okay okay okay, okay. okay. this was front of the lo- uh, room no this was in a village that's another village. camera trap okay, okay. okay. another camera trap fox comes early morning after the jackal is gone a feral mixed breed cat shows up mm. uh, outside my room mm. indian civet comes palm civet Sweet. comes palm out palm while i'm still in the room sleeping i have no clue these animals are all wow. around me all around. you are inside uh, that yeah a jackal comes outside my room and going into the field and feral dogs come at 6 that's when all the wildlife has disappeared before the last picture before i pick up my camera trap and I go for a safari mm. so camera trap is it's a separate device that yeah there's a pir sensor mm-hmm. which triggers your camera triggers okay. and there's a flash trigger on your camera which triggers the flash with it okay so the, these are the, 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 the light source we see is external flash, flash. Oh. flash. they trigger on the sensor detects movement okay, okay. it yeah. triggers the flash motion in the it's a motion sensor but then the animal the one uh, the forest department happened. uses the same thing no they no, use no. a box they have Which a box most like thing they yes. put it on the so there is now yeah. most of them are infrared because uh, lights like these mm. on long term might disturb the animals mm. okay and nowadays those boxes also take videos okay mm. and it's not this intricate because here mm. the animal might come and a million things can go wrong starting mm. from the motion sensor triggered the camera but the camera failed to trigger the the flash flash mm. so there are so many aspects the pir sensor mm. the wire connecting the pir sensor to the camera mm. the then the camera having the trigger for your flash so the flash so flash ka battery kya lekin trigger ka battery hai yeah uh-huh. flash ka battery trigger ka battery nahi hai ha uh-huh. ya yeah, trigger ka battery khatam ho gaya in winter mein okay It, anything can go wrong okay the, the flash didn't wake up has mm. an animal ever uh, interfered with the never no no lot of nice equipment and good tempered or whatever yeah, they were not curious about no, okay never because i place in a way that i am not directly in the path of the animal uh, the, the infrared ones that's how they are capturing these leopards yeah. in uh, borivli oh, national oh, park no. i think mm-hmm. right? yeah that's, that's nice that's what he's doing oh that okay then we also got a jungle cat in the morning at the safari at the gate of the safari lodge wow mm. Okay. Drives, really nice to keep it okay. so as an artist you do use different kinds of gear right mm. camera trapping was a conscious choice to do we knew there was tracks and we knew there were activity we are just curious what all animals mm. some find findings happen by accident mm. which was this mm. it's a jackal sleeping in a mint field aerial shot yeah drone drone now show. we were we were not looking for animals this is in lockdown mm. I was in our Panna Hotel, and I was flying a drone on the Ken River, which is in front of our hotel. Mm. 
and just getting some b-rolls ki kabhi na kabhi use kar hi lenge and i shoot in the fields and while i the drone i was returning the drone back to the hotel i realized there's something sleeping first i thought it was a dog then a clearer shot made sure it was a jackal and then over this is an agricultural field mint field yeah mint field right then we realized oh this can be a good project in the lockdown to observe the mint jackals because there's wow. a pack of jackals living in mint field and how they use it mm. like if you see every other piece of land here mm. has mint which means it is irrigated yeah except for this dry patch mm. and that is what gives them warmth in monsoon mm. so the adults are only sleeping in that patch not in the fields mm. this is when they got used to a drone and started staring at the drone <laughs> and when we started fl- so what we did was we instead of flying the drone mm. we used to send a drone at one place every day and let it hover till the battery died up mm. because when the battery is about to die the drone comes back by itself okay. okay so what happened it became a part of the environment the camera became part of the environment you know so the so by the seventh day the adults started relating it as a part of the ecosystem so they weren't scared of it mm. in fact they came closer to the camera mm. okay By the next week, we had the pups come out and play in front of the camera. They were hiding in the yeah uh, b- plants. Hmm. And then at night we checked: are they coming into the hotel or the, are they in the main <laughs> field? But they are. They are walking on the human path. I put a camera trap there, which which used to go to Golgar for used to be a, like a common community area for the hotel uh, visitors. Then. Hmm. This is outside the room. Where they're checking if the tourists have left anything for them to scavenge. Mm. So daytime they are hunting in the main field. Night they are scavenging in and around the hotel. Survival. This is behind the kitchen. Hoping there would be kitchen waste. So in the jungle, the night wildlife is kind of very yeah. entertaining. Yeah. Oh no. And the downside of them living in fields. One day we found a dead adult on the street in the village. Oh. What is the cause of death? Hit by. Hit, 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 h